This week in Jamaica now, unconstitutional, a court has ruled that the extension of Paula Llewellyn's tenure as DPP violated the constitution. The government says it will appeal. Street brawls involving students of several St. Andrews schools forced the suspension of classes. Terry Long in trouble, Jamaica's junior foreign minister facing criticism over a photo on his social media that had the faces of former PNP prime ministers blocked out. And Jamaica's murder rate continues its downward trajectory. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. A court ruling on Friday has left Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn's tenure in doubt. The Constitutional Court says last year's amendment to the Constitution allowing the DPP to choose to remain in office after an extension was expired was unconstitutional. In an oral decision on behalf of the court, Justice Sonia Wint Blair said raising the retirement age for the DPP from 60 to 65 was valid, but allowing Ms. Llewellyn to elect to stay on was wrong. The incumbent DPP has already reached the extended retirement age. This means that the application of Section 2.2 cannot lead to another extension in office by way of an election on the part of the incumbent DPP as this is unlawful. Section 2.1 of the Act as currently formulated has raised the retirement age without addressing the extension of tenure in office Consequently, any extension of the DPP's tenure under this section must adhere to the same process outlined in the previous section 96.1 of the Constitution, which remains unchanged by the Act. The only lawful method to extend the DPP's tenure remains by way of an agreement between the Prime Minister and the opposition leader. Judgment is entered for the claimants. This court declares as follows. 1. Section 2.1 of the Act is a valid constitutional amendment. 2. Section 2.2 of the Act is an invalid constitutional amendment. 3. Section 2.2 is severed from the Act and is struck down and declared as unconstitutional, null, void, and of no legal effect. The case was brought by opposition PNP lawmakers Philip Paulwell and Peter Bunting. Among other things, they argued that the government's approach to changing the constitution sidestepped the role of the opposition leader. King's counsel Michael Hilton says Ms. Llewellyn will have to step down as of Friday unless there's an appeal. The constitutional amendment was done without consultation with the opposition and brought to the House of Representatives and passed on the same day in July without support from the opposition. The DPP reached the age of retirement in 2020, but got a three-year extension which ended in September 2023. Ms. Llewellyn has been the DPP since 2008. Legal analysts say Section 96 of the Constitution protects any work done by Ms. Llewellyn since September 2023. The section says nothing done by a DPP shall be invalid by reason only that he or she has reached the retirement age. At least two schools in St. Andrews suspended classes this week amid ongoing violence among students of several corporate area schools. At least five schools were reportedly impacted. Principal of Mona High, Kevin Jones, said he suspended classes on Thursday and Friday to help calm things down. Videos have emerged on social media showing students fighting. Mr. Jones says one of the incidents took place on Monday and involved students from his school and Calabar High. The police say reinforcement will be put in place in and around the Halfway Tree Transport Center to monitor the movement of students. And commander of the St. Andrew Central Police Division in which the transportation hub is located, Senior Superintendent Marlon Nesbeth, says additional police will be deployed there. And a 15-year-old student of Irwin High School in St. James was stabbed to death outside the school compound on Thursday afternoon. The St. James police have identified the victim as Raniel Plummer. He was reportedly attacked by another male student and stabbed in the chest. A popular medical doctor in Spanish town St. Catherine was arrested by the police as part of its ongoing investigation into the Klansman gang. 23 alleged members of the gang have already been arrested. Those defendants, along with alleged leader Tesha Miller, were due back in court on Thursday. But the hearing was derailed following a protest by correctional officers at the Horizon Adult Remand Center in Kingston. A new court date of July 11 has been set. 
One of the suspects wanted for the murder of a policeman in St. Anne on Monday was shot and killed by the police in the parish on Tuesday. He has been identified as Siralda Butler, also known as Siri. Mr. Butler was reportedly killed in a confrontation with a police team in Steertown. A pistol was recovered from the scene. Constable Ricardo Fairclough was reportedly responding to a robbery and shooting when he was killed. Meanwhile, Jamaica's murder toll has surpassed the 300 mark. Police data shows 311 homicides for the period January 1 to April 13 this year, which is 14% lower than for the similar period last year. St. James with 41, St. Catherine South 29, Westmoreland 28, St. Andrew South 25, St. Anne 21 and Clarendon 21 are the five police divisions with the highest number of murders. Junior Foreign Affairs Minister Alando Terrellong says a member of his team was responsible for posting a photo to his Instagram account with images of former Prime Minister P.J. Patterson and Portia Simpson-Miller covered. Mr. Terrellong has faced heavy public criticism. He said the post on Tuesday was removed and was not in keeping with his style. The photo was taken on Mr. Terrellong's working visit to London. Former Jamaican Ambassador to the United Nations, Curtis Ward, said the minister dishonored former Prime Ministers Simpson Miller and Patterson when his job was to represent the entire country. Meanwhile, opposition spokesperson on information Nikisha Birchall wants the government to urgently implement a social media policy with stringent guidelines for public officials. What took place on Mr. Alando Terrellong's page is tantamount to an unpatriotic act because it wasn't only offensive to the former prime ministers or even those who may have supported them politically but it was a great dishonor to jamaica given that minister terry long is a state minister and the minister of foreign affairs and therefore his socials would be exposed to international audiences including the diaspora international partners and allies alike. This was a dishonor to Jamaica in general, and therefore we have to put systems in place to ensure that this does not happen again. The ruling Jamaica Labour Party has condemned comments from PNP Vice President Ian Hills, who has alleged that water tanks from a government program were given to a Westmoreland business owner on a partisan basis. JLP General Secretary Dr. Horace Chang says the comments were reckless, irresponsible, and callous. The businessman has dismissed Mr. Hills's claim and produced receipts, he says, show that he bought the tanks. He is the owner of all these tanks. Ten of them is here. Ten of them. Yeah. And this is my receipt where I purchased the, these tanks. Yeah. This is, I pay for nine. Nine of them I pay for. You can see 504,000. And I also still offer one of the tanks them. In all, it will have come to 560,000 for the 10 of the tanks left. So, me is the owner for all these tanks. And I didn't get my tanks from no politician, no councillor, no JLP, no PMP. I work very hard, night and day. I'm asking somebody that put out the video, please to come and talk to me and hear the full hundred how it goes. I have been getting a lot of checks that people can come and come and stop up my tanks. And I'm, I'm on my way. When I do this video, I'm going straight to the station to report it. Former parliamentary clerk Valerie Curtis says she will accept nothing less than a public withdrawal by House Speaker Juliet Holness of a letter in which she was accused of gross dereliction of duty weeks before retirement. Meanwhile, new clerk Colleen Lowe says Ms. Curtis did not share an instruction from the Speaker about certain Auditor General reports before going on leave in January. She said Ms. Curtis returned in February and did not comply with the ruling. But Ms. Curtis has insisted that Ms. Lowe and her secretary were aware of the Speaker's ruling. And in a statement on Wednesday, the Senate President Tom Tavares Finson said there was no animosity with the Speaker. Jamaica's data protection regulator says the law does not prevent releasing the names of parties to a contract contradicting Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ, which has refused to name the owners of properties it's leasing. The TAJ has claimed that unspecified provisions of the Data Protection Act bar it from disclosing who owns a property in Anotter Bay, St. Mary, and another in Mandeville, Manchester. An Auditor General's Department's report triggered public outrage in March after revealing that the TAJ spent almost $400 million to lease two buildings that remained unoccupied up to August last year. 
but the Office of the Information Commission says mere disclosure of the names of companies contracted by any person or entity, whether a government agency or within the private sector, would not be a breach of the law. Opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson says Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark, who has responsibility for the TAJ, should get the agency to release the documents. JLP MP Norman Dunn has confirmed he leased a property in St. Mary to the TAJ. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on the notification and subscribe today. I'm Jovan Johnson and before we go, let's hear about the launch of a multi-school drone program in Jamaica. It was a discussion that we had about a year ago with uh, Superintendent Samuels and Major Brown from the JDF. Uh, we were here in Montego Bay to do a distribution for 32 schools for the IT program that the Mid-Atlantic chapter has, which is what we call the Share the Wealth uh, Initiative, where we donate IT computer equipment to other schools other than just Cornwall. Uh, in two and a half years, with the support of Sandals Foundation, we've been able to donate to 51 schools in total, uh, close to 600 computers, close to 400 laptops, etc. Uh, but it, during that conversation, we talked about where the skills are. So for instance, the, the skilled jobs or the, the drone operators are primarily based in Kingston. And what we recognized is, so those students on, or these officers or those on the, on the Western side of the island would have to get trained in Kingston. We believe that's Kind of a waste of resources so what we th what we thought about is is to give them opportunity to have the training done here as opposed to traveling but also to provide them with students who coming out of high school will be already skilled to operate drones and thus being able to assist them in this regard sandals foundation has had 15 years of experience and interest in partnering with organizations that somehow can affect or influence the educational landscape in recent years, particularly the digital divide, in ensuring that our young people have opportunities that are available to the young people everywhere in the world. And this forms a very important part of the partnership with the Cornwall College Old Boys and the drone pilot program. It meets a lot of our targets in the sense of its education, it's bridging the digital divide, it's talking to young people in a space that they are very excited about. Thank you.